Okay, so today I want to talk about the for loop once again. And in a previous video, we did take a look at the for loop, but we looked at it from the perspective of counting through a specific number of iterations. So if we put in the parentheses for i in range, parentheses three, five, doesn't matter, it's going to execute that looping structure that many times. And we also took a look at using two variable digits, two digits. So one colon five, one being inclusive all the way through four or zero colon four. So zero, one, two, and three. So the first number is inclusive and the last number is not inclusive. So it will stop until, or we could just put an actual number in there and say, okay, loop this many times. And then what we did is we printed out the value of the iteration and we call it the iteration. So what, what loop count are we on? One, two, three, four, five, and so forth. However, the four loop structures more consistently used with items in a list in Python. So what's a list? A list is a th list of things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the same data type. I could have a list of anything, um, strings, names, numbers, fruits, vegetables, houses, doesn't matter. Um, but for this particular uh, instance for this particular tutorial, I have a list of names. Okay, so names of students in a class. This may or may not be uh, accurate, but I have a list of names. So my list includes Michael, Dacia, Jennifer, Anthony, and Princess. So you'll see a couple of significant features here when we create a list. One, the list is has square brackets. So the square brackets is right here where you have the enter key and up and over to the left a little bit, you have a square brackets. So not the curly braces, not parentheses, square brackets. And that's gonna be a list. And they're gonna be assigned to a variable. And you can see that the variable name is associated with a list. And I have two lists here. I have one of names and one of weights. And this comes from a specific lab uh, from some school that I will not mention today, but if you have attended it or are you familiar with uh, collegiate academics and computer programming, then this may look familiar to you. So with that being said, I have a list of student names and I have a list of weights. So they're just random numbers. Okay, so I have a list of those. And each of those are separated by a comma. So my strings, of course, are in quotation marks. And they just happen to be in double quotes. I could have put them in single quotes, but for today's exercise, they are in double quotes. And I do have five names. They're not necessarily, I could, if I wanted to, um, correlate these names to these numbers in terms of weights. I don't think I'm doing that in this particular uh, program. However, what I want to do is iterate through each of those lists. Okay. And this is what we will use the for loop for. If that's a pun, I don't think so. But it's a perfect example of why you would use the for loop. You would not necessarily use the while loop structure, the for loop is really built for this type of thing, this type of iterating through a list of things. So what we do is we're going to use the list as our box. It's a bigger box now. It's not just holding one thing. It's holding more than one thing. In this case, it's holding five things. Now, I could add to it if I wanted to, but it, we know that it's a list of things. And each of this, each of the items in my list will have an index position. So um, where is it located in that list? Now, in this particular tutorial, I'll not, I will not show you how to identify what um, what data element is in what index position. Right now, I just want to use the for loop to iterate through those elements, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create the variable name and we're going to say for name in names colon, okay? So for 
and I could have easily have just put for I in name. So what I want to do is identify it every time I'm looking at a specific data element in my list from index position and my index position, sorry, start at zero, just like my iteration count, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this would go zero, one, two, three, four in terms of their index position. <clears throat> I'm going to print out what data element is in that current position. And then what I will do, then what I will do is go to the next one and go to the next one. So for each name and names, and this is how the for loop structure for blank in blank will iterate through each of those elements in that list. So this will print out Michael, Daisha, Jennifer, Anthony, and Princess line by line by line with a two second interval. Okay, and that makes sense. You've seen me use the uh, time module before. <clears throat> so good, so then we'll go to the next. And I'm doing the same thing. And this is where I'm gonna stop here because this is really a two parter in terms of what I have going on down here and what I have going on up here. So this is just to get you started in using the for loop. I'm gonna do the same thing with for weight in weights. So again, my list is up here, just a random set of numbers. And so for each of those items, and each of those items is an integer, you can see it's a list of integers. This says list, and each of those is a number. It's an integer. And for each of those integers, print it out. So it'll go, it will iterate through, it will go 187, 201, 222, 190, 212, 215, with a two second interval. But then it says, if weight is less than 200, and it's gonna make those comparisons. Now we've not done a, I think we have done actually, uh, we, the computer knows that when one number is greater than another number or less than another number, it's built into the system. So it's going to say when a weight, when one of these weights is less than 200, print this out on a separate line. So this isn't going anywhere. Weight is less than 200. Okay. So it will first print out the weight. And if it sees that it is less than 200, it will say weight is less than 200. Then it will go to the next number. And it will do that five times because there's only five elements in my list. Okay? So with that being said, I will stop the program here. So I will run the exit function. I will save it. I will run it. And let's see if I can actually run it. There we go. Michael, Daisha, Jennifer, Anthony, Princess. And so you, you can see exactly what I said we will do. So this will run through my list. It will stop when I had the exit function. And look, so we did Michael, Daisha, Jennifer, Anthony, and Princess. And if I go back up to my list, Michael, Daisha, Jennifer, Anthony, and Princess. So good. It did exactly what it was intended to do. And then it says, create a list of weights, search the weights for less than 200. Create a list of weights, search for weights less than 200. So it made the print statement. It cycled through each of the weights, 187, and then it went down to here. If weight is less than 200, print this out. Now, I don't have any other else statement. I don't want an else statement. I don't need an else statement. Just if this condition is true, let me know. That's all that it, that is saying. If this condition is true, let me know. And it is. So if this condition is true, the condition is true, it will print out this code block. Print weight, whatever that is, is less than 200. 
201, 222, 190. 190 is less than 200, 212, 215. So that is perfect, 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 perfect. So again, we're taking a look at the for loop structure. When we come back, we're going to use it again, and we're going to add, but that's next time. So hopefully this was a value to you, and I'll see you then. Take care.